Um, so I first started noticing um, mood swings and feeling really irritable and overwhelmed. Um, my periods were beginning to be not as regular. I always used to be able to mark them out on the calendar and then I noticed there was lots of differentials happening in terms of when I was actually coming on and how I was feeling. Um, I went to my GP. He decided that it would be good to do a blood test. They came back to say that I was beginning to go into the menopause. So they thought to protect my bones, they would put me onto Femstone. This was in my early 40s. And then I stayed on Femstone and, they, and the idea was I would go up to age 50. And then they would review the situation from that point. I then moved from Sussex to Wales five years ago in August. And when I landed here, um, I wasn't feeling great and I went to see the GP here and they suggested I go on to Tiverlane. The transition from going from something that gave me a regular but artificial bleed over to something that did not was a bit harrowing in terms of my mood. Um, I was called the Tiverlane terror in my family because I'd become quite unhinged to the point that my daughter suggested I have a mental health assessment. Um, Tibalone worked for a little while, but I still noticed there was um, quite a lot of irritability and mood swings with it. But you know, I wasn't bleeding and I was functioning okay. My weight was fine. Everything was okay. Um, was good. So then I started noticing I was getting hot flushes at night, and they reviewed the Tibalone situation. Decided I might get more benefit from then going on to estrogen and progesterone separately started with um, gel for oestrogen, progesterone tablets, and I wasn't absorbing it. I'm one of these people that was struggling to absorb the gel. And what I found was that the whack of gel was sort of causing a peaks and troughs with moods for me. So I think for somebody that has previously had quite severe PMS, that maybe wasn't the best pathway for me. And what I found is since then we've gone over to patches, we've tried lots of different strengths, um, but that is better for me to have something that releases into my body at a regular pace throughout the day, 24 seven, is absolutely fine. I change them on a Monday and a Thursday. The problem I've got is with progesterone. I'm very sensitive, it would seem, to progesterone. And um, it causes me to bleed heavily, and my mental health is extremely affected. I become very depressed, very anxious, to the point that I'm having quite dark thoughts. Um, at, at one point, I could, I could sense that I was moving from I can't cope to what is the point, and that scared me, and I contacted my doctor again. I've now on citalopram to help with that, whilst we find a way forward as to how to prescribe for me in a safe way, because of course, most people will insist on prescribing progesterone alongside the estrogen. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Um, progesterone is still the issue. I'm going to try it and see if that's any better. Where I go from that point, I have no idea, but we'll see. I'm hoping with um, a collaborative approach with GP, maybe gyne consultant, we can look at a way that keeps me functioning really well, which I do. On just oestrogen, life is dreamy. <laughs> and I'm on testosterone. I forgot to say I'm on testosterone as well because I have really bad brain fog and um, really low energy still on on oestrogen amounts that I was very well held on, according to blood tests. Um, they did tests to see if I had testosterone. I didn't have a trace. So I'm now on, on testosterone. I prefer the testing because that's daily. And what I'm on now is, I think, Testogel, and that's on every fourth day, which is not so great. It's not a, the same benefit somehow, but it's better than nothing, and I'm grateful. So, yeah, that's my journey so far. And I would say most people, I think I've been very lucky with the GPs that I've, um, I've had the pleasure to cross paths with, but I know there are lots of people and lots of friends that I have don't have this experience and that they are early per perimenopausal days are always fogged off with you need antidepressants you're depressed you're anxious 
without looking at the hormonal disruptions that may be found. So that's me.